What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here and back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, today I want to talk about how you can make some very easy gold in Season of Discovery, and it's not really even like there's no requirements to this farm, even though being certain classes will help you speed things up. And the th beautiful thing here is that you can start making gold even at a low level. So let's just say Phase 2 is coming out very soon, it's like in a couple of weeks now, in 2 or 3 weeks depending on how fast I get this video up. It's in a 2 and a half weeks basically, or 3 weeks. So you will have time, but phase 2 is coming out and based on that I think a lot of people that haven't played phase 1 will start playing. I have a couple of friends for example who was not interested in phase 1 at all, but they really are interested in phase 2. So I do think phase 2 will bring a couple of people, like for first of all back to season of discovery, and then a couple of new people as well that didn't have any interest in level 25 being the cap, suddenly come back or actually start playing in phase 2. Be that being said, you can start doing this farm really early, once again you can see me being in Lokmodan, and this farm is based on two things. It's not just a one sided farm is based on two things and you can do it differently based on your class and based on your level. So for example I'm doing this on a feral or a druid with increased movement speed. If you don't have that there's a different part you can take and we're basically combining herb farming with mob farming. So we're farming herbs specifically Briarthorn and Mage Royal for the for the possibility of getting swift thistles. These can drop in various zones out there, but there's three different zones that have been the most successful for me personally, and this one right here that you're watching is the best one for me personally. That is Lokmodan, just running laps around the entirety of Lokmodan, or the eastern part of the lake basically, just running up and down in a circular fashion on the eastern part of the lake, and then including the two islands on the lake as well, is making me so much gold. As you can see right now, it has gone down to 11 gold per hour, which isn't really that bad, like based on this being in the level 10 zone, that is not bad at all. Once again, I have 30% increased movement speed, but if you don't have that, you can literally do this once again, and make, let's just say 9 gold per hour, right, by gathering flowers in a level 10 zone, and you do need some skills for this, but that, pre that pretty much means you can start doing this at level 10, or level 15. I think the mobs around here are a little bit high level, but um, yeah, being level 15 plus, you can start doing this farm, as you can see here, there are some level 16 mobs around, so the higher level you are, the better this will be for you. Now, if if you only want to go for herbalism, feel free. The majority of the gold per hour from this farm comes from herbalism, especially in the way I'm personally doing it. That being said, there are a bunch of bears around. The bears drop something called bear meat, which is used in a whaled supply for smoked bear meat. And for me, these bear meats are selling for 5 silver each, and they have a 40% drop chance from these bears. So what I'm personally trying to do is farm Briarthorn and Mage Royal for the chance of getting swift thistles, while also pulling bears in between. So as you can see here, we're pulling three bears, killing them all, looting the meat, and then we keep moving to the next possible spawn for Briarthorn or Mage Royal. So we're pulling bears while running basically, trying to maximize or min-max our downtime, but we're also trying to not spend any more time than we have to farming these bears. That being said, if the herbalism part is very contested on your server, then you can also basically stand at the bear area and wait for Briarthorns to spawn on you basically, because because the more people are farming the herbs, the faster they spawn, so by you standing and farming bears, they will just spawn on you 24-7. Now this is not the only place to farm this, you can also do this in Darkshore or Weta or Westfall. For Westfall, you don't really have any bears to farm, so in that place you're basically just running around, running laps and gathering flowers, but in Darkshore you have quite a few bears and moonstalkers that you can also farm. As you can see right here, we are trying this farm in Darkshore as well, and after 3 minutes we're sitting on 8 gold per hour, this really goes up and down based on your RNG with Briarthorns, or I mean Swift Thistles. The more Swift Thistles you get from the farm, the more the gold per hour goes up, but also the bear meat actually plays a huge part. The beautiful thing about Darkshore is that every single mob you kill while looking for this will be valuable. Even the plain striders, they can drop strider meat, which is selling for about 5 silver on my server at the moment. Moment. It was 2 silver I think when I made the video, but it's 5 silver now, and the bear meat as well is being recorded at a price of 2.9, but it's gone up to 5. So the gold per hour here is really really good, even just from farming the bears, and once again the beautiful thing is that in Darkshore, every single mob you find you have a reason to kill. The Moonstalkers drop Moonstalker fangs, uh, are they called Moonstalker fangs? 
they drop some small small furry paw or something like that, which is used in Dark Moon Fair. So you can kill those for that, then the bears drop bear meat, and the striders drop strider meat, all of which are worth several silver each between 5 and 10. Actually, I've been selling the small furry paws, for example, for 10 silver each, and for some reason they're selling for that price. They dip down to 3 silver, then back up to 7, then back up to 10, then back down to 3. They basically just keep getting reset 24 7, but people buy them for the price they're listed at. So for me, that's been a really good farm. So in Darkshore, if you really want to focus on mob farming over herbalism, then I think Darkshore would be your best bet. And you can do this while leveling. Imagine you have a level 15 druid and you can do this farm. That way, you're getting experience, gold. At the same time, hitting two birds one stone, it's absolutely perfect, and it's a way that I personally really like farming when you are leveling. That way, instead of just doing quests, you can save those quests for level 25, especially if you're doing this at level 20 plus. You can save those quests for level 25, go back and do them for gold, and instead you're hitting two birds one stone while leveling. You're getting gold, and you're getting experience. So to show you guys exactly where to go and what to do, or what I personally do at least, I have a get you can download the GatherMate 2 and GatherMate 2 data. That way you can see all the located or all the recorded spawn locations for every single thing you're looking for. But in Darkshore, if you're farming in Darkshore, you want to focus on the northern part. Basically go from Aberdeen, go a little bit north and then start farming here. And walk all the way up to the river here, and then walk across the river for that one Briarthorn spawn. And then walk back down again, but avoid the Blackwood Corrupted area right here. So you're basically up here, up here, all the way up. If I can scroll in, you can actually see. So you're starting at Aberdeen or Bashal around to the west. You're then going up, 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 and next to the river, and then you go down next to Bashal around again, and you just keep doing this in a circular fashion. That way you're hitting all of the Briarthorns, all of the Mage Royals, and you can even grab some Silver Veins, even though for the most part they're not really that profitable, but if you do find one, you might as well grab it, right? So on this part, once again, you are killing a lot of mobs, so if you want to focus on killing mobs, I think Darkshore is the one for you. That being said, Loch Modan was my personal favorite. It's just way too good. So in Loch Modan, you focus on the eastern part of the actual lake so what i'm doing is i'm starting in the middle you then go down you go across or like you go around the iron bands excavation site so you go down like this and around the iron the excavation site you go back up again and then you go into here through all the Briarthorns and go through all the Briarthorns here and then go all the way north for this two Briarthorns right next to the bridge and then always check the islands. For some reason, whenever I go to the islands, the herbs are always available because I think a lot of people don't go to the islands. So once I went to the island, got this Briarthorn, this Mage Royale, this Briarthorn, this Mage Royale and one Briarthorn down here as well. So definitely always check these two islands before continuing. So all the way up, check these two islands, then you're back down again, and then you'd run down and reset and do the entire thing over again. There's a lot of bears in the middle, basically where I'm pointing right now in this area. So if it is very contested for you, then you can basically farm bears in this area, like this general place, because you have how many Briarthorn spawns? Like 10 Briarthorns all the way around you. That way, whenever they do spawn, you can grab the Briarthorn, and when they don't spawn, you can kill the bears for the bear meat to just keep the gold power rolling in there as well. So Loch Modan is perfect. There is one more place to farm and that is Westfall. In Westfall you just want to focus on only looting Briarthorn and Maid Royale. That being said, there's quite a few of them and the best thing to do here is just do big laps around the entire zone. Just start here for example, then you do a lap around the entire zone, all the way down to Moonbrook and then all the way over to the Rogue Tavern and all the way north again and reset and start the entire route over again. Just focus on Briarthorns and Maid Royals. You could also loot um, um, Bruce Weed, but when it comes to like Peace Bloom and um, Silver Leaf, I just leave those alone. Even Copper Veins I leave alone, but Tin Veins and Silver Veins I tend to grab if they are available. So that's pretty much a farm. It's really, really simple, really, really easy, and way more gold per hour than I was personally expecting. Now the main driver for this farm is Swift Thistle, so check out the price of Swift Thistle on your survey, and my gold per hour, which was between 8 and 10, or actually 8 and 12, is based on Swift Thistles being 22 silver each. So the, the more pricey these are, the better this farm will be, and the perfect thing here is that if you're remembering Classic WoW, 
the Swift Thistle went up to one gold each. Which means that even if you, like people get to level 60, you can go back and do this farm if you abandon your player and make a pretty decent amount of gold per hour just hunting for Swift Thistles. It's a thing that people are investing into for phase 2, so I would not be surprised to see these go up to at least 30 silver closer to phase 2 and maybe 40 silver in phase 2 as well. So it's a good farm to do now and it's going to keep its value all throughout the season of discovery, at least most likely. Either way, that's the farm. Once again, if you do want to have access to more farms, including early access, exclusive information, and just any farms when I find them, check out my Season of Discovery Gold Guide in the link in the description down below or the, the pinned comment. This one contains 134 pages of gold making info, more than 50 different gold farms, and so far we've had 17 videos in early access in Phase 1. Phase 2 is about to come out, so you don't, don't want to miss out on those early access videos, we're going to pump those in Phase 2 as well. So if you do want to mix uh, mix really min max your gold making in phase two in season of discovery definitely check it out down below it's a great way to support me and make some gold at the same time hitting two birds with one stone either way that's the video for today a bit of a different one but it's a definitely good gold farm and requires pretty much no effort so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you again very soon